So now the levels are looking great. I'm look, I'm happy with the way the levels are at. What I want to do now is add a light wrap. And this is something I just figured out how to do. A light wrap is basically like, you know, it's going to wrap the light around the CG. And there's a node I just basically put together here. If you guys are interested in getting this light wrap node, uh, let me know and I'll put it, put it up for uh, download. Basically, um, I'll, I'll link the video that showed me how to make it. So if you guys want to follow, you really should figure out how to make it so you understand how to fix it and manipulate it if something goes wrong. Because like at first, he made it for HD and I didn't know how to fix it portrait video. And now I hear auto resize and that automatically does that. Now my light wrap is in the wrong place. So what I want to do is bring it here. This color correct for at the moment, we don't need it. So I'm going to unhook that and I'm going to hook back up my output node. Hook that back there. Good. So we're here and I'm going to zoom in up about here because the light wrap is going to really affect the stuff that's in the bright areas. So with my light wrap, it needs an background and it needs a foreground. Our foreground is going to be the CG. So I'm going to bring a tab here. Boom. Now it's clicked and it automatically clicks it to the background. So you press control T. Now it switched it to the green. Now it's on the foreground. And now I need my background. And typically you'll take whatever your background plate is and you'll put it on there, right? So I'm going to take my background plate and drag a connection to it. And right now we don't see anything, but if I put it in my viewer and press one, Okay, actually press two. So I'm gonna, now you can see what it's doing here. See this little glow? It's a little bit too much at the moment. That's what the light wrap is doing, right? It's really going to help us uh, set this in the scene. Now let me go back here and sew this out. This is what it looks like before. Now, what I want to do is use my background and use that over. And I want to merge what's coming out of the light wrap on top. So I'm going to a, grab a merge node, drag it onto my deal into the pipeline right there and then i'm going to grab the output from the light wrap and input it into the foreground boom now you can see it's there but this was killing me for the longest like it killed the shadows like look the shadows are gone now there's no shadows so i was like whoa what is going on right see there's the shadows and then here i plug the light wrap in the shadows go away that's why it's important to know how this was created so i knew that the light wrap needed a background in order for it to work because it uses the background to generate, to generate this highlight. It basically takes the background and blurs it out and it uses, uh, it, it reverses the mask and it makes it bleed inside of the, uh, of the alpha of these things here. So I was like, okay, since I knew how it was built, I knew that I needed my shadows. So don't use the background, use the background of the shadow layer. So this is the shadow layer right here, right? Here's our main plate that's going down into the background. It's coming down. This is the background plate. It's coming straight, straight, straight down. So let's just use it after the shadow. Here's our shadow. Let's use this as our background plate. Drag this on. Boom. Now there's our shadows with the light wrap. Okay, perfect. But unfortunately, our light wrap, our light, blah, 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 light wrap is a little too strong like look at it it's like totally glowy like that looks fake light wraps need to be very subtle right so if i click on my light wrap and it's basically all of these settings here like once you build this you will know what each setting works for this top is like how much is clipping into it but what i want to it's the brightness the brightness the glow is too much here is my glow and if i pull this glow down see that right see that that's the max, but the glow is too much. So I'm thinking like something down, let's bring the glow down to, I think I had 0.4. And then what I even do, I think the blur, it might be a little too much. Let's take the blur. Yeah, it's a little bit too blurry and just make it very subtle, very subtle, right? I'm gonna go like round it off to one on the blur. Now, let me bring back a little bit of that glow. We just want it to happen around the edges, literally, right? Okay, so there, that's adding that glow. And of course, wherever the light source is the strongest, it's more, you'll see it more pronounced. Like right here, we can really see it kind of wrapping around there. Vice versa, if we come down to here, we hardly see it anything because there's not a lot of bright sources light to wrap that around there, right? And then this part down here was literally from the render. 
from Blender because the light that was bouncing off the ground reflecting onto this plastic here and this white was re reflecting onto that. That was from Blender. Then I had a little bit of a little bit of uh, clipping here because a Blender's particle system is not the best and it's like it's very weak and it it just I don't know I don't want to get into that issue on that. Okay, so there that's looking like that. That's with our light wrap. Let me go full screen. All right, and that's what that's looking like. You can really see how much that light wrap makes a big difference. And I think we're really close. The blacks. Now, if anything, what I'm going to do is knock down a little bit of the saturation. Let's we got to do a saturation check. Let's go back to here. Again, this is the technique I learned from the newt guys. Again, with uh, let's bring out our output here. Let's take this color corrector. Let's drop it back in the pipeline. Crank up the saturation. Just overdo it. I'm gonna go like five. And what we want to do now it looks like a cartoon. It looks like I'm at Disneyland, right? What I want to use this to do is to see how much we're ma what's our color tones looking like compared to the, everything else in the scene. Okay, the scene is a little bit orangey, a lot of orange colors going on, right? So if anything, but I'm probably not even going to worry about it because everything is looking okay. Like our CG is not poking out too much. Like look at the blue of this wall from the video to the blue of our CG. They're almost very close, right? Like if this was, for example, to show you what it would look wrong. If this was like this, now we know like, whoa, our CG blue is so much brighter than the wall CG blue, right? So then we know we're a little bit off, right? But we're not, we're, we're fairly close. If anything, am I gonna desaturate it just a tad bit? Just a tad bit. I'm gonna desaturate, okay? Because our CG is coming from a, a perfect computer graphic world and I'm gonna just dirty it up. I'm gonna desaturate it a little bit. Come back down here. And I'm going to go ahead and reset the saturation there. Okay. And again, make sure that pre-multiplied is checked on this also. It should be, right? Yeah, pre-multiplied is checked in. All right. That's looking good. If anything, now what we're going to do is a final color grade. 